Mr. Bigley. Zombies, am I right? They're everywhere these days. From terrorizing us in video games, to crawling into our favorite TV shows, to starring in some of our country's finest cinema. Really? And most recently appearing in Naughty Dog's critically acclaimed action-adventure survival horror, The Last of Us. It seems you can't take a step in any direction these days without ending up waist-deep in undead organs and brain matter. But what makes a zombie a zombie? An insatiable craving for living flesh? A decaying body? An inconsistent level of physical prowess, even within the same franchise? I mean, seriously, are these things supposed to be nursing home slow or fast as hell? I really need to get back to the gym. Anyway, while common canon seems to dictate that zombies are reanimated corpses, not all zombie lore points in the direction of the undead. Haitian medical accounts from the 1930s suggest that zombies may not have been the work of restless spirits, but rather the result of scientific manipulation, particularly pharmaceuticals. This notion continued into the 1980s when ethnobotanist Wade Davis authored two books about the subject, theorizing the right application of drugs could cause a person to fall into a state of suspended animation for significant periods of time. The first such drug was tetrodotoxin, or TTX, a neurotoxin found in the pufferfish that is known to kill a handful of Japanese thrill-seeking diners every year. Really guys? Death by fish? You couldn't have died inventing battle mechs or something awesome? <clears throat> anyway, the toxin according to Davis could then be combined with a compound made from datura, a flower whose poison can cause delirium and the complete inability to distinguish between reality and fantasy. Once this mixture entered a person's bloodstream, the result was an individual so psychologically traumatized and medicinally warped that they would become a shambling slave to the very witch doctor who forced this grim fate upon them. A zombie, if you will. Sounds pretty feasible, right? Unfortunately for Davis, many prominent members of the scientific community debunked his theory and he instead sold the rights of his book to a movie studio. But what does any of this have to do with The Last of Us? You may be saying. The zombies in that are supposed to be infected by some kind of mushroom or something. Well, for starters, the mind-controlling compounds Davis came up with aren't that unlike the fungal parasites that antagonize the human population in The Last of Us. And unlike Davis's theory, the mind control here isn't all that far-fetched. In fact, it's happening right now, and Mother Nature's the bitch responsible. The fungal cordyceps is a genus that currently includes about 400 species around the world. Best known for being comprised entirely of endoparasitoids, cordyceps have been the subject of extreme fascination for centuries, and more recently, morbid curiosity. Until recently, the most well-known species of cordyceps was Ophiocordyceps sinensis, a fungus that preys upon ghost moth larvae. The cordyceps spores enter the body of the larva and begin to gradually expand within the host's body cavity. The caterpillar is eventually killed and mummified as its insides are filled to capacity. Once it has finished growing inside the corpse, the mature cordyceps bursts through the host's forehead and begins to release spores that repeat the gruesome process. Each species of cordyceps is known to attack different creatures in this manner, normally insects or arthropods, while others are cannibalistic to other fungi. In each case, once the spores enter a body, the living tissue of the unfortunate host is replaced by that of the cordyceps' own. Most recently, the species Ophiocordyceps unilateralis became national attention via BBC Nature's documentary series, Planet Earth. The program shows extended footage of ants being preyed upon by cordyceps, and explains that the fungal assailant actually alters the ant's behavior before bursting through its host's skull by forcing the ant, now known as a zombie ant, to march into areas at a specific temperature and humidity ideal conditions for the cordyceps to produce new spores. What's that? Alter the ant's behavior? Now where have we heard that before? Oh, that's right. The guys and gals at Naughty Dog were so inspired by the nightmare fungus that they decided to incorporate it into one of their games, as humanity's main adversary. In The Last of Us, most of the population has been wiped out or infected by a new species of cordyceps that specifically targets humans. Much like all other species unfortunate enough to become prey to the parasitic fungus, mankind is altered both physically and mentally, clearly for the worse. Suffering from far more severe symptoms than our ant counterparts, humans who have been taken over by cordyceps become erratic, violent, and incapable of controlling the urge to spread the infection through direct and violent contact with any and all survivors. Those exposed to cordyceps not only exhibit traditional physical deformities, such as the fungus breaking through their skin and skulls, but also utilize the unholy power of echolocation to hunt down their terrified prey. 
Severe cases are even able to use concentrated clusters of spores as ranged weaponry, presumably with the goal of infecting those struck by such projectiles. Much like all species affected by the cordyceps' voracious instinct to thrive and multiply, once a hostess died, the corpse is used as a means of releasing more spores into the air and continuing the lethal cycle. That's pretty crazy stuff, but how would it ever be able to spread across the entire planet's population, you may be asking? And that's where things get even crazier. Cordyceps have been revered for centuries in many areas of the world for their potential medicinal applications, namely in China and Tibet, where the fungus is used as a treatment for everything from fatigue to cancer. Additionally, these ancient remedies are heavily exported and can be found in Chinese medical clinics across the globe. In other words, people are already pumping this stuff into their bodies. Cordyceps are also the main source of cyclosporin, a drug used to suppress the immune system during human organ transplants. Human organ transplants. That's halfway zombie right there. So it's not too far-fetched of an idea that one of these ravenous species of fungus could someday threaten mankind's love of shiitake mushrooms in our Asian takeout. Fortunately, no such cordyceps-fueled zombie outbreaks have been reported so far. Current medical reports indicate the compound derived from cordyceps is normally ingested by ailing individuals in pill or capsule form, and as far as doctors can tell, side effects have only included abdominal distension, decreased peristalsis, constipation, and irregular menstruation. So, in other words, nothing for us to worry too much about. For now. I can almost guarantee you will. Oh my god, I did. I'm an idiot. I'm really bad at this. Uh, it doesn't help that I'm... What the penis?